Digimon World Championship? <laughs> More like Digimon World Champion shit. Fucking got him. You beauty. Just bro. <laughs> That's probably a bit harsh, and to be fair to this bizarre title, it's not so much that it's a bad game, more that it's under-realised. The concept is great, however it constantly stumbles over awkward, clunky design and a general lack of things to keep you occupied. Sounds exactly like a mobile game, right? Well, yeah, if this were featured on the modern app stores, it'd be a blast. Furiously tapping your furry companions for five minutes a day as you wrestle with your colon would be quite an enjoyable experience. Unfortunately, it was released on the Nintendo DS in 2008. So wrong place, wrong time, I guess. Ah oh, well, no point crying over spilt potential now, let's get into it. Digimon World Championship is a virtual pet style game, which features an overhead perspective, the ability to care for multiple monsters at a time, and that's about it. It's really just an advanced Tamagotchi with a touchscreen and a rechargeable battery. All of the enjoyable adventuring elements from the other VPET RPGs are entirely absent, which means that this game consists of all the work and none of the payoff. You'll go on no grand adventures, tackle no overarching narrative, and barely play the fucking game because it's largely automated. Every day feels the same as life endlessly rolls at you until it all starts to blur together into a hazy mess of feeding faces, wiping asses, and praying for your life to end as you watch the AI battle and hope to fuck your team wins. Whew. Caring, as it's been known to do, impacts what type of Digimon you end up with, and generally functions the same way as a fundamental part of every VPET RPG. A neat little change that I noticed in regards to Digivolution was that if you've unlocked a path to a specific Digimon before, and then fail to care for them in their next life, they will still ultimately end up as that Digimon. This guaranteed route to strong monsters got me through most of the game with little effort, as once I initially unlocked War Greymon, I could completely neglect my Digimans and I'd still end up with the same War Greymon in the end. It defeats the point of caring outside of the bare minimum required for keeping them alive, but also removes most of the tedious busywork inherent to short life cycles, which is a boon. There's been another cool tweak to the VPET standards, and that's how time functions. The game's structured around an ever-progressing calendar system which takes place over the course of what the game calls years, but are actually just sequences of 32 days. Contained within each year exist four seasons, each lasting eight days, and they all have their own unique traits. For example, if you train during summer, your output is increased exponentially, but during winter it's decreased. The days themselves are exactly what you'd expect, only significantly shorter. Sun goes up, sun goes down. It's a fucking day. Two real-world seconds is the equivalent of ten digital minutes, and much like any wholesome Christian household, the day begins at seven and ends at ten, whether you like it or not, which means that a full day is three real-world minutes. It's generally a fair time allowance, but feels unnecessary, seeing as how it doesn't really affect anything. Sure, it seems inherent to this style of game, but given the fact that you can manually end days whenever you wish, it comes across as though it was put in place solely to give the illusion that the game has any sort of pacing. On days where I had a lot of things to achieve, the time allowance was too little, but on days where I had comparatively nothing, it felt like too much. While I don't think you can ever give a player too much time, especially since, as I said, you can end the day whenever, you certainly can give them too little. The time constraints often left my Digimon unfed, their cages uncleaned, or disallowed sufficient time to move sick and dying monsters to the hospital. In a game where a handful of care mistakes can quite literally result in a shit outcome, I don't think I need to stress the importance of this. With that said, I'm also horrible with time. Just look at my upload schedule. Daily events also cut off at 3pm, which is a strange move and caused me to miss more than I care to admit, but I'll dismiss this as a small gripe because again, I'm fucking awful with time. The only real effect the day-night cycle has on gameplay is when you're capturing Digimon, as different monsters show up depending on what time of day it is. I don't think it was worth the pain, since obtaining new monsters is clunky and infuriating, and the game actively disincentivizes amassing a collection. Digimon are acquired through hunting, which sounds far more barbaric than it actually is. Effectively, you go out into varying terrain to bait, trap, drug, and forcibly rope a bunch of Digimon in order to claim them as your own. Now I know what you're thinking, and yeah, I said rope. It's fairly harmless, but entirely stylus controlled, which comes with some issues. Largely the hit detection on Digimon, and the screen in general. To capture a monster, all you need to do is draw a circle around them and simply click and drag until their stamina depletes. It's true to life in that respect, as that's how I've always captured my digital friends. I struggled trying to draw a bloody circle that the game would accept. Like, I'm no artist, but if I roughly connect a line around something, the game should accept it as a circle, even if it doesn't look like one. The geniuses at Digital HQ also decided it'd be a super cool idea to have the touchscreen control both the hunting functions as well as panning around the terrain. So even if it did recognize my circle, trying to press the fucking sprite so I could toss him around like Dad's salad was a huge gamble. 
Once a Digimon is roped, they attempt to flee, either into nearby caves or simply off the map where you can't chase them, and because of the small screen size, they disappear quite hastily. With the jank ass controls and the fact that time still progresses during hunting segments, this can be incredibly infuriating, and 9 out of 10 times it is. It doesn't help that you're given a capacity restriction for the amount of Digimon you're allowed to have. If you exceed the limit, you've got to let one of your beloved creatures go, and this heavily disincentivizes going hunting after you've established your core team. It's not all bad though. There are these plugins you can buy for hunting expeditions, which are like a categorization system and display specific types of Digimon on a small on screen radar. Given the tiny viewing window, this makes life a bit easier, especially if you require a certain type of monster for a title fight, which I'll get into in just a moment. Captured Digimon end up in this here room, the main partition of your home base in which all your mons exist. You can pick them up and sling them across the screen, which is pretty fun, if the game allows you to pick them up in the first place. Between the unresponsive controls and the fact that Digimon hate standing still, it can be a pain to interact with them. On top of that, with the amount of clutter that ends up on the screen, it can be tough to even find the poor bastards. This is the screen you'll look at for the majority of your playtime, and it's not the most interesting thing in the world, but as I said, it can be customised, which is fucking rad. As you play, you'll gradually unlock more cages, which can be placed in varying formations depending on their size, and they have all sorts of essential effects. The only ones you'll really use either train or heal your digital companions, and there is a third type which changes their attributes, but this is only selectively useful when you're bordering on new digivolutions. One of the must-have cages is a godsend, as it automatically feeds and cleans poop, and effectively makes the gameplay itself, even more so. There's a total of 20 panels, only 16 of which are able to be changed as the base panel sucks a dick. Still, 16 is a fairly generous amount. If you had too many cages in play, it'd be a chore to manage, and would defeat the point of customization since you'd never be required to customize anything. Cages come in different shapes and sizes, and you're able to manually position them along your grid. The way in which you enact this modest customization feature is a simple drag and drop system, and one of the only times I've seen a Digimon game nail the interface, so props for that. Each cage is also upgradable, but how much the upgrades actually impact their effectiveness is quite hard to pinpoint. Any effects felt minuscule, and they're quite expensive, so I kinda just forgot about them. So before I move on to the chunky, undercooked meat of the game, I've got two minor gripes, and the first one is the inventory system. It's a bit unnecessary at times, as you constantly need to restock meat by purchasing it from the store, even with an automatic feeding cage, and since the maximum you can hold is 99, it runs out very quickly. It would have been far better to just have the value of the meat subtract from your currency as you use it, instead of having to buy it manually, or simply having a higher hold capacity. The second minor gripe is the vastly underutilized letter system, wherein random people send you messages filled with varying shit. Sometimes you'll be given an item, while other times you'll be challenged to a battle. This could have been a great opportunity to spice up the general flow, or to introduce some sort of narrative elements, but they fail to capitalize on it. It can help when you're on the brink of Digivolution by dropping small hints about what monster needs what stat, which is nice, but it's not enough to save it. One of these messages actually offers to buy your Digimon, but the offered amount is usually lower than doing one or two title matches, which we'll get into now. So the cream of this game is the title bouts, and they're exactly what they sound like. It's a bout. For a title. Every single title bout is unique in requirement, and if you can clear them, you're granted an equally unique medal. Collecting enough medals will increase your tamer rank, which grants various benefits, but the primary one is the ability to access the fabled and coveted Championship. Ooh, yeah, see, I knew it was important because it was in the title. These battles can't be accessed whenever, as they're delivered daily with an ever-rotating roster of which bouts you can actually participate in. Some days are absent of these opportunities entirely, but some come bearing up to four of the bastards, and trying to fit them all in before 3pm can be quite a rush. A calendar system does exist covering the upcoming year, and allows you to see which bouts take place on which days, which is a really neat feature if you want to plan ahead for whatever reason. Once you've met the prerequisites and entered a bout, there's no way to back out of the preparation screen, so you'd best be prepared. I'd often reflexively accept whatever bouts I could qualify for, but quickly found myself heavily unqualified for and had my bum handed to me. A sequence of honest mistakes on my part, but why isn't there a button to cancel out of a fight? Like, what? The preparation screen allows you to select up to three Digimon for any particular skirm. Some limit you to one, but most allow you to select all three. The only sort of customization or control of battle is found within the prep menu, with each monster having a selectable battle style under their sprite. There's normal, which effectively allows the Digman to do whatever they wish, like the good old days. There's special, which encourages them to use their ultimate attacks more, and then there's support, which increases their chances of using whatever support abilities they have. 
Other than that, the combat is entirely automated, so after this screen you cross your fingers, pray to whatever dream whale you believe in, and hope to fuck you win. There's not a lot to say about the combat itself. Occasionally changing one Digimon to support will edge out a victory, but other than that it's supremely uneventful, with uninteresting sprites walking into each other until one of them dies. The title requirements also get overly specific later on, such as requiring three of the same Digimon, and with the low capacity to hold Digmans, this is far from ideal. With that said, it's not all bad, as medals are designed like the stars from Super Mario 64, where if you're a complete Spurg like me, you can still beat the game because the developers put in excess. Once you've acquired enough Spurg stars, you're allowed to have a crack at the championship. First, you've got to qualify by clearing three matches in a row, and then wait for the championship to roll around so you can do five matches in a row and win the game. Yep, that's the championship. <laughs> more like championship. <laughs> The championship only rolls around once every four years, which is 128 in-game days. If you miss it, or if your digivolutions don't line up with the timing, then you've got to wait another 128 days. Yeah, it's a neat concept, but the lack of shit to do makes it super tedious. I spent eight in-game years just smashing the end day button until my monster's mega stages lined up with the championship. The Macho Man Randy Savage is not happy with your decision, yeah. Once you beat it, you get a fancy little credit sequence, and then you drop back to the cage screen as though nothing happened. However, as a reward, you can now manually control one of your Digimon. Yeah, it's a terrible reward. Fucking hate Digimon. This game was a mobile phone app released 10 years too early and on the wrong device. It features all of the worst, most tedious elements of the previous VPET RPGs with none of the payoff, and it's a chore to interact with. It's interesting going back to the old games after having played Redigitize and Next Order and Cyber Sleuth because I know they eventually made good games. It's just a shame that all the shit ones can't be wiped off the face of the earth. Oh well, could be worse. Could be Pokemon. <laughs>